Hi everyone, I'm José Valim, and today I'm here to talk about Livebook 0.11 biggest feature, file integration. So, when I say file integration, it doesn't sound like something terribly exciting, but bear with me, I'm going to show you some really neat features. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new notebook. And the idea is that throughout the last releases, we have been improving how Livebook is a useful tool for working with data. And data comes from different sources. One common source is a database, which Livebook has good support for. You can connect to different databases using smart cells. You can run SQL queries. And in this release, we even added support to newer databases, which we are going to talk later throughout this launch week. However, data also comes from files, comes from services, URIs, it comes from a bucket in S3. And Livebook did not support those so far. I mean, in Livebook, you can write Elixir code. So of course, you can uh, read the data from a URL, you can read data from the file system, you can use a package to talk to S3. But the Livebook UI had little understanding about it. And that's exactly what changed in this release. So in order to show exactly what I mean, I'm going to open up the files sidebar in here. And what I can do is I can say, hey, I can add a file. And my first example, I have this data set for the, uh, the Iris data set from Hugging Face. So the first example I'm going to do is that I'm going to load the data set from this uh, URI. And now we have two choices. We can, hey, I want to store a reference to the URL, to the URL, but I can also say, hey, I want this file to be attached to the notebook and be versioned with the notebook. For now, let's say we want, we want it to be a reference. And now this file is tracked here. So this is great because now when you come to Livebook, we will open a notebook, you can easily see all the data all the files, the data files that it depends on. But what is really neat is that now I can come and I can drag and drop this file here. And it's going to say, hey, I can see that this is a CSV file. What do you want to do with this? And then I can say, well, I want to create a data frame from this file. And now Livebook is like, oh, to create a data frame, you need this dependency. So I'm going to add this dependency for you. And by the way, here is the code to create our data frame. So now I can execute the code and I can read the data as a data frame. It's as easy as that, right? But not only that, because we know where the data is coming from, we can a lot of times be much smarter. So let me show another example. So uh, let's remove this one. So uh, we have a clean board to work with. So let's say we want to add another file. And in here I have a S3 like bucket and I have a parquet file on S3, okay? So I'm going to add that to the notebook. And once again, we can come and we can drag and drop. Now, the cool thing about Parquet files is that they have a columnar format and they also have a schema description. So when I say I want to create a data frame from a Parquet file, Livebook knows that and say, hey, I want you to create a lazy data frame. And that means that it's not going to download all the data at once. So if you're working with a really large data set, two gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, of memory is not going to load everything into memory. It's going to keep it lazy. And here it says, hey, I don't know how many entries I have this because I have not loaded all the data. And we can also manipulate this data lazily as well. So I can say, hey, I want to do like some data transformation. So let's do this. Let's say that we want to get that the species is not equal to the one we have so far, Iris Cetosa, and see how that changes the result. So I wrote the data transformation, right? And then I say, look, I want to remove this particular species. And you can see that now we filter the data set. Still, everything is lazy. We haven't loaded all the data from S3. So I don't know how many results I, I have, but if I export the data, it's going to, at this moment, get the query, run, and only bring the data that is necessary. Right? I can also say, look, I want to actually collect the results, right? I don't want to be lazy anymore. I want you to bring everything. And then if I flip this, then it's going to know exactly how many entries it has. 
But the idea here is that, you know, we don't have to bring all the data because Livebook knows that the data is stored in S3. Livebook knows the format of the data, so it set up the best pipeline possible for us. And we can even continue to do things. I can say, look, I want to transform this, this data and assign it to uh, the same variable, uh, DF for data frame, right? And then if you want to go and plot a chart, we can, it's going to figure out, hey, you want to plot a chart, you need to add this package. It's going to add the package and we can say, okay, I want to plot the uh, sepal length by the petal length. And yeah, please show me this chart. Here's all the data. Let's add the species as color, right? And there you go. You can go and bring the data. The data is lazy until the moment you need it. And then when you need to chart it, when you need to export it, the data is loaded. So this is really important because now you can, if you have to work with gigabytes of data, you can do that lazily. You can even stream the data from one bucket to another bucket without requiring your machine to have hundreds of gigabytes of memory. Of course, this is very important for the data journey, but our files integration goes beyond working with data. And that's what I want to show you for the second part of this video. So I have opened up another notebook. And so far, we use files integration to work with different data formats like CSV and Parquet. But the files integration go beyond that. And so far, we have only shown how to get data from S3 or from a URL. But what we can do is that we can also drag and drop files from the file system. So for example, here in my desktop, I have a SQLite database. I can get this database, drag and drop it here, and then it's going to figure out, okay, you wanna add this database as a file. So it's going to add it as an attachment now. So these will be versioned with the notebook and it's going to suggest actions. So for example, because we know it's a SQLite database, we can try to describe it. So let's choose this option. It's going to figure out it needs to add some packages in order to make that possible. So it adds the dependencies and it's going to say, okay, here's the code to describe the database. We execute this code and you can see that this is a database uh, with um, three different tables. And one of those tables is the Iris data set. Who would have thought? So um, because it's in the database and Livebook knows how to talk to databases, I can say, okay, so now I want to use a smart cell for a SQL query. And it automatically picked uh, the SQLite database. So you can say, okay, and I want to read what is in the Iris table. And that's it. So that's how easy it is to get a database, get a SQLite database, drop it into your notebook and start working with it, start manipulating it, start exploring it. And again, it's not only about SQLite database. So here's my favorite example, okay? I have a audio file here on my desktop as well. Let's drag and drop this audio file and see what is going to happen. So uh, it says, look, uh, do you, I know this is an audio file. Do you want by any chance to transcribe what is in it? So I'm going to choose this option. It's going to suggest some packages that is going to perform the task and it's going to give all this code to us. So I can execute the code. And what this is going to do is that it's going to download the neural network, it's going to compile it and do the transcription for us, which says Livebook is freaking awesome, which I agree. So this is what I wanted to show you for today. Livebook now understands about files, where they are located, what are their formats, what is inside them, and can provide a bunch of different tasks and suggestions uh, of what to do with those files. I haven't shown everything that you can do. Um, so some of those is going to be as a surprise for when you give this Livebook new version a try. For example, try drag and drop an image and see what happens from that. And uh, the other thing I want to say is that as I dragged and dropped files into the notebook, you've seen that every time, right? So for this, for the audio file, for example, every time we don't execute the task that we suggest, we actually emit the code that executes the task. And this is very important for us. We don't want Livebook to be this magic box that you put things in and results come out. We want you actually to be able to introspect and learn and change 
everything that you can do. So for example, if you want to change this model, try different ideas for audio transcription. You can totally do that. You can actually get this model and this code and put it in a web application on in the service that you have that is running Elixir, right? And start running this model for your users, right? And that's the whole idea. We want to give you the code that you can manipulate, that you can evolve uh, at your own needs and for your own enjoyment as well. So that's what I had to share for today. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.